A judge ruled in favor of the city of Sandpoint over banning guns at a popular festival. We are joined by Taylor Vida with updates from both sides. And two major universities less than 10 miles apart handling coronavirus precautions in very different ways. We examine how WSU and the University of Idaho are approaching classes amid the pandemic. It is hot outside right now and it's only going to get hotter. Tracking near record heat with your forecast next. Uh, our, our numbers aren't where we want them to be, so. Idaho will remain in stage four for another two weeks. Governor Brad Little made that announcement earlier today. Not allowed at the festival at Sandpoint in Idaho, a judge ruled in favor of the lawsuit brought against by Bonner County and the County Sheriff's Office. The popular concert series Festival at Sandpoint has a policy banning firearms. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us here tonight. I'm Regina on Whitney is off. Welcome everyone. I'm Mark Hanrahan. Let's get right to our top story tonight. Governor Brad Little says the state has not met the metrics needed to move on to stage four or out of stage four. He said coronavirus hospitalization rates remain too high throughout the state and the state has an 8% coronavirus positivity rate. But the governor did say case rates have continued to decline for a couple of weeks. Diagnostic positive tests are also on the decline. Governor Little also made it clear that if stage four were to end, the guidance would stay in place. It, 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 it doesn't mean the emergency declaration over, and it also doesn't mean that the guidance that we send out uh, to the health districts, uh, that, that guidance will be here. Initially, stage four was set to expire back in June. Gatherings of more than 50 people are allowed as long as precautions are taken in stage four. Spokane County currently remains in only phase two of Governor Jay Inslee's reopening plan. We are hearing from both sides tonight. They were involved in a lawsuit surrounding a gun ban at the festival at Sandpoint. Last year, Bonner County and the sheriff there sued the city of Sandpoint over the ban. But a judge ruled this week in favor of the city and effectively dismissed the lawsuit. Krem 2's Taylor Bido brings us reaction from both sides of this issue. In a statement to Krem, Bonner County Sheriff Darrell Wheeler was to the point with his thoughts on a local judge ruling against him. Sheriff Wheeler telling us, quote, the judge says I have discretion. Fine then, I will apply the law as I see it. The whole lawsuit came following this incident outside a festival at Sandpoint concert last year. So festival has a rule, no weapons within the venue. So two options here, you can take it secured in your vehicle or we can take you over and refund your money to you. A local man and concealed carry advocate wasn't allowed to enter the festival at War Memorial Field because he was carrying a gun. The festival organization, which had leased the field from the city of Sandpoint, had a policy banning guns. That prompted county leaders to get involved and eventually resulted in a lawsuit last year from Bonner County and Sheriff Wheeler against the city. The suit accused the city of violating state law regarding guns on public property. Well, after several motions over nearly a year, a judge this week ruled in favor of the city, effectively bringing the lawsuit to an end. The judge said that Wheeler and the county didn't have standing in the suit. Wheeler had argued in the lawsuit that it was his duty to uphold Idaho law and the right to bear arms on public land. But the judge said that argument was unpersuasive and that Wheeler still had a significant amount of discretion to enforce the law, regardless of the festival being able to ban guns. Hence Wheeler's statement saying, I will apply the law as I see it. Wheeler had also argued that a decision on the gun ban could prompt protests and an ensuing response from his agency. But the judge didn't buy that argument either. The city of Sandpoint, meanwhile, expressed relief with the suit coming to an end. This City of Sandpoint is very happy with the outcome. Well, obviously, a lawsuit like this causes divisiveness in the community. The 2020 festival was canceled because of the COVID-19 pandemic, but the city says they're anticipating the event coming back next year. Defending the lawsuit hasn't been cheap, they argued. It's been a year-long issue before the before the courts and very expensive to Sandpoint taxpayers were about $90,000 into the cost for for this case. The man shown in this video, Scott Herndon, is part of a separate lawsuit against the city over the gun ban. That case hasn't been decided yet, however. As of now, it's set to go before a judge next February. Taylor Vido, Crem 2 News.
Now to tracking the coronavirus, Whitman County reporting 38 new positive test results today. That's about 20 fewer than we saw yesterday. All new cases are in people under the age of 39. All are in stable and self isolating. That's according to the health department there. It is day two of Washington State University offering COVID-19 testing for students with its mobile health unit. This is in response to the significant increase in cases since students started returning to campus. Meantime, across the border, the University of Idaho is allowing in-person classes. Right now, it's reporting that about 1% of its students' tests are coming back as positive. Ground 2's Amanda Rowley compares how the two neighboring campuses are dealing with the virus. It's a tale of two cities. In Pullman, WSU is all online this year, but some students still came back to campus and the number of cases continue to rise. But in Moscow, the University of Idaho is back to in-person classes and requiring all students to get tested, but their number of cases remain steady and low. So we compared the two. This school year, WSU classes are all online. At the U of I, it's in-person classes. WSU urged its students to stay home, while the U of I required all students to wear masks and social distance. Now that each university has students roaming their respective campuses, let's look at testing. The first day of school, U of I required students to test for the virus before returning to classes. That was not the case for WSU because it was hopeful students would in fact stay away. It makes sense. They had a lease. They were going to pay for it one way or the other. Um, we were hoping that they would choose to stay home, but they didn't make that choice. And so we've got a lot of people who are living off campus um, in apartments and houses, and um, that's where we're seeing um, the increase in cases. So now WSU is asking anyone who goes onto campus to submit a form confirming they are not experiencing any symptoms. It's also encouraging all students to get tested at its mobile health unit and awaiting assistance from the National Guard. Taking a look at cases on campus, the University of Idaho is reporting about 1% of its student tests coming back positive. WSU's mobile health unit just opened yesterday and tested 134 students. But Whitman County case numbers indicate the highest case increase is among the college age group. If there is an outbreak on these campuses, U of I says a physician will call those who test positive, discuss isolation options, and conduct contact tracing. WSU, which again says it was not anticipating the number of students who returned to campus, is now working on a plan. But as for parties, both universities are disciplining students who are not following gathering restrictions. Pullman police are citing party hosts and U of I will go as far as expulsion to discipline students. Amanda Rowley, Krem 2 News. In the meantime, the two universities are strongly encouraging students to avoid travel ahead of the holiday weekend. Uh, but if they did choose to come to Pullman, we want them to stay here. We don't want folks to be traveling across the state and either spreading the illness or perhaps picking it up from home and then bringing it back to our community here in Pullman. U of I is asking those who do travel over Labor Day weekend to be tested for the coronavirus no sooner than six days after their return or at the first sign of any COVID symptoms. All right, now to tracking several wildfires throughout our region. A massive wildfire in central Washington is growing. The Evans Canyon fire is now 52,000 acres in size. It is 0% contained. Nearly 1,000 homes are under level three evacuations. That means leave the area right now. Crews are also working to contain the Heaton Road fire. It's burning in Spokane County outside of Spangle. Authorities say flames torched at least 320 acres there. And the goal today is really to try to finish trailing that fire. Currently, they have the trail 90% completed. Today, level two evacuations remain in place near the fire. And with that, let's check in now with uh, Tom Sherry. So Tom, how is the weather in the next coming days going to affect uh, certainly our fire danger in our area? It's very high, tender, dry conditions. We haven't had any real big rain. We picked up almost a quarter inch of rain back in June, and then we just had little sprinkles between June and now. So it's tender, dry, and it is hot, well above average temperatures, and it's going to get even hotter than the 88 degrees, which is our current temperature right now. Wind is out of the west northwest at nine miles an hour over the weekend. It's going to get uh, breezy and early next week. It's going to get downright windy. 
Uh, and again, when you take a look at the current air quality, we were in the moderate phase yesterday and today we have good air quality as and I know some folks have been bothered by allergies, but those are actually pretty low too. So I think it, uh, it's been more of a function of smoke in the air at times and also dust. Uh, since we haven't had any of that rain, as I said, a measurable rain or big rains uh, since June. High pressure across the Pacific Northwest going to keep us high and dry. Near record heat tomorrow. The record high is 96. I'm forecasting a high of 95 degrees on Friday. Will it cool down for the Labor Day weekend? Not so much. 94 on Saturday, 91 on Sunday. It will cool down on Monday. I'll talk more about that with a look at your seven day forecast coming up in a few minutes. All right, Tom, I've definitely noticed the dirt because I kind of get too